Have you wondered what are the things to be considered before selecting a motor for electric vehicle application? Speed and power. Speed, 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 speed. Speed and power. A lot of power. Power, 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 power. 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 Speed and power. Well, I don't think that's sufficient. In the last videos, we have seen the selection criteria of the systems which are being used in EVs. From now on, we'll start from the motors because this is the most closest part to the output. So buckle up guys, this is going to be a big ride. So let's get started. The motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. That thing we already know. And this is achieved by generating a magnetic field by flowing an electric current through the coils connected to either rotor or stator of the motor. The motor consists of two main components. First is the stator and another is the rotor. The stator is a non-moving part. It stays still. The rotor on the other hand rotates according to the magnetic field generated between rotor and stator. Well now, this basic understanding is sufficient. Later, we'll discuss about the every motor in detail, which can be used in electric vehicles. The motor is the heart of every electric vehicle. The motors are way more efficient than gasoline engines. Because there are only two moving parts. First is the rotor. Second is the bearing. These bearings are made of very small metal balls, which move very easily. So they don't cause much friction and they generate very less amount of heat. Hence the power dissipation across it is comparatively very low. To know more about motors used in electric vehicles, first we have to see the different type of setups present in an electric vehicle. Because we need to understand how are we going to mount that motor efficiently so that it can provide very good drive power to the wheels. This is the traditional drive train that we see in every gasoline vehicle. The motor can be connected to the clutch, then the gearbox and then the differential. The reason we use this configuration is to provide very high torque at low speed and low torque at high speed. If you see the torque speed curve of the gasoline engine, the initial torque is low at low speed. So this configuration helps. The differential allows each wheel to rotate at different speed and direction as well. This configuration in EV is used when the electrification of old IC engine vehicle has to be done, where we can just replace the engine and mount the motor. However, this is not the efficient way because there are a lot of system present between motor and wheels, which reduces the efficiency of the drivetrain. In second configuration, the clutch is not there. It has fixed gearbox only, just like scooters. But in this case, we don't get desired torque speed configurations, but the complexity of the system is reduced and we get good efficiency. In the third setup, the motor, gear and differential is connected as a single unit, which drives the motor. This configuration is present in most of the EVs, such as Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Spark where the motor is mounted at the front side of the vehicle and drives the front axle. The fourth configuration has two separate motors and gearbox for two wheels where the speed and torque of each motor is electrically controlled hence there is no need of differential. So the mechanical wear and tear is eliminated but the electronic system becomes very complex and the controlling is tricky. This is the same as that of earlier configuration, but the gearbox is inside the wheels. As a planetary kind of gearbox is fitted and we get inline arrangement of input and output shafts. In sixth configuration, the motor is like the wheel of the vehicle where the rotor is the outer part and trator is inside the rotor. This configuration is very convenient as it reduces the weight of total drivetrain which contains very heavy gear mechanism and whatnot. 
but the wheel alignment and other mechanical aspects become a very challenging factor in this. For better control and power, an all-wheel drive configuration is best of all and can also be implemented in electric vehicles. Well, it can add more cost, weight and complexity. In this case, two motors can be used to drive the front and rear wheels separately. The all-wheel drive provides a very good cornering performance and handling. Oh, I know, that was the boring part, but actually we need to understand those configurations before selecting the motors. Now, we'll jump off on the motor selection criteria. The first thing we have to consider for selecting a motor is to find which motor gives a very high torque initially that is at 0 rpm. Because for initial acceleration, vehicle demands very high torque due to inertia and other resisting factors for vehicle to get moving. As speed of the vehicle increases, the torque demand decreases, but the power delivery should not change at all. It should be provided as much as required. Well, all motors which we use for the traction application fulfills this criteria like induction motors and DC motors. Second key parameter to select a motor is power. Because the power is needed to get more speed or to pull heavy vehicles in tougher terrain. Some measure it in horsepower and some doing kilowatts. The electric motor is rated at continuous power and peak power. That means how much maximum power it can provide continuously and how much more power than this continuous power it can provide. To give you an example, a motor's continuous power can be given as 22 kilowatt and peak power can be as high as 74 kilowatts. You must be thinking why there is so much difference between these two powers. Why don't we just use the peak power itself? The reason behind this is the motor may be capable of providing two or three times more power than the rated configuration, but operating it above given capacity puts stress on the motor, which may lead to overheating and eventually it may damage the motor. To change the output power, we need to change the current injection into the motor. The motor rated at a current of 50 ampere may run at 100 ampere, but for some minutes only. This peak power comes handy when tough situations like acceleration or hill climbing is occurred. So never select an undersized motor, it won't last longer. One more interesting part is highway speed requires more power. The power required at the speed of 120 km per hour is 4 times the power required at 60 km per hour. That means current requirement rise above 4 times. If the speed is just doubled, power delivery of the motor depends on the load because while driving the vehicle, the speed or torque changes. So the power delivery is never constant. If the motor is rated at 22 kW, then the vehicle may need only 5 kW or 10 kW at some point of time. This has to be controlled by a motor controller. And this controlling of motor should be very easy or else the complex motor driving becomes a drag for a motor controller. It becomes very hard to control. The efficiency of this motor should be as high as possible, including higher efficiency of regenerative braking. Well, after all, it's the whole point and ultimate goal to jump onto the EVs. The motor which we are selecting should be highly reliable and robust because the vehicles work in very tough conditions and they experience various shocks, vibrations and so many things. As we go for higher specs and expectations for the motor, in the end, no doubt it will add cost. So this is a very important factor to be considered while selecting a motor. So the motor which we are looking for should fit in our budget. There are various type of electric motors we can use, which are DC series motors, brushless DC motor, permanent magnet synchronous motors, three phase induction motor and switch reluctance motor. There are other motors out there as well, but mostly 
for electric vehicle application these are widely used if you see the current scenario go kart evs and two wheeler application which requires very less power and performance say less than 3 kW also cost and size is the major factor which decides the motor it is always good to go with bldc hub motors which are small and we don't need any complex transmission to deliver power from the motor to the wheel because motor is embedded in the wheels itself just like the six configuration we have seen earlier or it is also good to choose bldc motor with or without a transmission system as we have seen in the fifth configuration for a high performance application which requires high power to drive such as high end two wheelers cars buses trucks the permanent magnet synchronous motors or induction motors are mostly used because these motors provide higher torque and very good speed range the size of these motors is very small as compared to the same powered ic engines unlike ic engines motors don't produce noise while running so the design of silencer air filter and other things related to reduce the noise and air pollution are eliminated so the evs are cleaner for the environment for future approach the research on synchronous reluctance motors and switch reluctance motor is being held which can provide a very cost effective solution than permanent magnet synchronous motors or induction motors and might increase the power of drive train then we can have more options for motor types for electric vehicle application i think now you have got the concepts related to motor selection used in evs next time we'll check working concept of these motors one by one if you still have any doubts you can ask in the comment section hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to my channel i'll add more stuff related to evs in future videos and finally thanks for watching